Hello, everyone, again. This is Pastor Edmund Castro, and I would just like to say I hope that everyone had a good Sunday uh, as you all celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, today, I would just like to share a few thoughts about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, the first scripture that I have is in John chapter 11 and verse 25. And it says, Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So in this scripture, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, he not only said that he, he would be resurrected, but, and, but he says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Uh, and also it says, again, he that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I tell you what, when we, according to this scripture, when we believe on our Lord, on our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we will never die. You know, even though these physical bodies die, we know that our spirit and soul will go to be with the Lord and we shall never die. Anyone who believes on the Lord Jesus Christ will never die. He only sheds off this old body, but his spirit and soul go to be with the Lord. Um, and also I wrote Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection gives the possibility of eternal life uh, with God for all people. Um, you know, er, in other words, no, everyone, uh, the Lord has given everyone a chance to experience eternal life. If only they will believe upon our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know what? Really, no one is beyond the saving power of Jesus Christ if they will only believe on him. Uh, but I just wrote that many still refuse to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And in John chapter 3, verse 36, it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he but believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth, ab abideth on him. So it said, Those who reject Jesus and those who refuse to believe in our risen Lord and Savior uh, shall never see life. You know, uh, in other words, you know, real life is not really here on earth, but real life is when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we become spiritually alive. See, actually, everyone is like a walking dead person because they are spiritually dead. But when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we become spiritually alive. And, you know, praise the Lord, we become spiritually alive. And we are also promised eternal, everlasting life. I tell you what, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're only surviving. You're not really living because true life comes from our Lord and resurrected, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our resurrected Lord and Savior. Uh, so those who reject Christ will never see life because true life comes from our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In fact, there's one scripture that says where Jesus says, I am the, I am the life. I am, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in that scripture, he's, you notice he doesn't say, I am a way, a truth, and a life, but he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So that's where true life comes, and that's where our eternal life comes from is when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And one day we will be in, the, in heaven with him for all eternity. Uh, I wrote this down also, uh, for us who have believed on our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, death is not something to be feared. We don't fear, we don't have to fear death anymore. Uh, you know, because we know that this physical death is only a gateway into eternal life. It's only a gateway to our Heavenly Father and to all the joys of heaven. Uh, so, re so remember that death is only a gateway into eternity for us who have believed, into a wonderful, 
a beautiful, new, and everlasting life, a beautiful life uh, that we have never experienced on earth. One day, we as Christians, when we go through that gateway, uh, you know, of death, we're going to be with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we'll experience the joys of heaven, heaven. And we can't even imagine here on earth how beautiful heaven must be. And um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, it says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. I want you to know something that, you know, immediately after, you know, we die, you know, we will be present with the Lord according to this scripture. So praise the Lord. You know, we are going to be with the Lord for all eternity, praising him and worshiping him and experiencing the joys of heaven. I wrote this down that Jesus' resurrection is a comfort to us when we have to fight, when we are facing death or when we lose one of our loved ones, because we know that the separation from our loved ones is only temporary because we are promised that we will see our Christian loved ones again in heaven. You know, it's like my mom always says, uh, when someone dies physically, when a Christian loved one physically dies, we are not saying goodbye to them, but we are only saying see you later, because we will see them again soon. Um, also, I wrote, the resurrection of Jesus Christ has made life triumph over death, has made good triumph over evil, and has made hope triumph over despair. So Jesus has had victory over death. He's had victory over evil. He's had victory over despair. Um, and I wrote this down, that it is a sign of God's awesome power. And we know, you know, when we think about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's a sign of God's awesome power. And we know that if he, if, if Jesus rose from the dead and was victorious over death, hell, and sin, then, and we know, then we know that nothing, it's comforting us to us because we know that nothing is impossible for God. There's no difficulty that we're going through that God cannot deliver us from. You know, God can do all things. So if Jesus, it, again, remember, if Jesus can rise again from the dead, then we know that all the difficulties that we go through are small compared to that. And the Lord, our God, can surely deliver us from the difficulties of life if he can raise Jesus, if Jesus can be raised from the dead. So praise the Lord. Um, I wrote this down that also the resurrection of Jesus Christ has again defeated sin, de defeated guilt, and defeated hell and death. You know, all those things have been defeated. You know, we no longer have to uh, carry around guilt anymore because Jesus died for the sins of the world and he died for, you know, we don't have to be feeling guilty about those sins anymore because Jesus, when we believe on him, he's died for those sins and he's cleansed us now from all unrighteousness. And we no longer have to fear death anymore because, you know, Jesus died, you know, die, he, Jesus died in the grave and has been to hell and back. So we know that now we don't have to experience death and hell anymore because Jesus has defeated death and hell and he's defeated sin. So we no longer have to fear death anymore. Uh, also, we no longer have to carry around guilt anymore because we've been forgiven. Uh, and there's a scripture that tells us, I will remember their sins no more. And like I'm always saying, why would we keep remembering what the Lord our God has forgotten? I wrote this down, when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, again, we no longer have to carry the weight of sin, and we no longer have to carry the burden of guilt any longer, and we no longer have to carry, again, the fear of death anymore, because Jesus has defeated all those things. He's defeated sin, defeated guilt, defeated uh, death when he rose and was victorious over all things. Uh you know, I wrote also 
when we believe on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we also have sure hope that our sins have been forgiven and that we are saved and on our way to heaven. In Romans chapter 4, 4 verse 25, it says, Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised for our justification. You see, Jesus, here it says, who was delivered for our offenses. In other words, Jesus uh, was given to die for our sins. And it says, and he was raised again for our justification. In other words, and he was raised from death to make us right with God. So praise the Lord. Also, by the resurrection, we have a hope of one day having a new body. Just as when Jesus rose in his ascended new body, we shall also have a new body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 53, it says, For this corruptible shall, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So praise the Lord. You know, one day our, oh, our bodies that we have right now on earth are corruptible and they're mortal. They can be destroyed. But when we, you know, one day on the great day of the Lord, we're going to have brand new bodies that, ne that, are, that never get old, that can never be corrupted, that can never get sick and never die. We're going to have brand new bodies. So praise the Lord. And because of all these blessings of the resurrection that I've talked about, we can experience true hope, true joy, and true peace. You know, we experience hope. The kind of hope that we experience is not, uh, it's not like this. It's not like saying, oh, I hope I'm going to heaven. I hope that I've been saved when I believe on our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. No, you know what? When it's not like that, our hope is like this. I have a sure hope of heaven and I have a sure hope that Jesus, our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ has saved my soul because I have believed on him. And we also have a sure joy and a sure peace. You know what? There's no greater peace and there's no greater peace, uh, joy and no greater peace than knowing that we have been saved and forgiven of all of our sins and knowing that our hearts have been made right uh, through our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when we believe on him. So praise the Lord. And uh, how about you today? Have you uh, received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Do you know our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? If you don't, uh, then if you don't, then I encourage you, uh, then I encourage you today to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Um, all you got to do is just ask him in your own words, you know, ask him to save your soul, ask him to come into your heart and life and confess that you are a sinner. Just ask it in your own words. And I want you to know, uh, he'll and uh, he'll come into your life and he'll forgive you and save you of all your sins. In fact, in John three sixteen it says, "For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, uh, shall not perish, but have everlasting life." So, if you would like to have everlasting life today, then again believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Also, the Bible says in Romans, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So why don't you call upon him today? And as I say, just use your own words. In fact, you can repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear God, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for all of my sins. And I believe that he rose on the third day and that he had victory over Satan, he had victory over hell, he had victory over death and sin. And so uh, right now, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner, and I need your forgiveness. So, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and life, and I ask you to save my soul. In fact, Lord, I give you my life. Take control of my life. And help me to live all the help me to live for you all the days of my life. And I thank you now for saving me and loving me. And I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. So if you said that prayer and you meant it with all of your heart, 
then you just got saved. You know, so praise the Lord. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. And I, I will see you all next time. This is all I have today. So we'll see you then. Bye.